Hi, I'm Gil Benbrook from Phoenix Stages and TalkinBroadway.com, and I am here with the leads from Arizona Broadway Theater's Man of La Mancha. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Running here in Peoria through November 11th. We are here on the fantastic set by Cara Thompson. This is, like, when I, when I came in and saw the drawbridge and the walkway, I mean, it just blew me away. It's... I can't imagine, you know, how fun it must be to play on the set every mm -hmm. night. Must be phenomenal. I always judge a set by if when you shut a door, if the whole set shakes or not. And this, this thing is shake. like a Soft, house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nothing moves. So Jessica, let's start with you. For, for you know, Man La Mancha, the show's over 50 years old. It's a classic musical. But somebody actually may not have heard of this. If if somebody asked you, how would you describe it? What would you what would you tell them? Um, I would say that it. Well, the the plot is uh, a man and his servant. Sidekick. 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 <laughs> Manservant. Um, are brought into a prison in Spain during the Inquisition. And during his first few moments in the, in the holding room, in the prison, he is put on trial by his fellow prisoners. And as a means to defend himself, he puts on a what they call a charade. And the charade is the story of a man named, well, Alonso, Alonso Quijana, Quijana right? who plays in his delusions Don Quixote, mm -hmm. de la Mancha, and um, it is basically the story of him um, finding finding beauty and happiness in a world that is void of it. And it has a fantastic score, right? And to dream the impossible to dream, dream, the impossible dream, dream um, which you guys knock it out of the park, I must say. This one. Um, <laughs> so James, let's uh, you know you play these three men, mm -hmm. um, and you know it's it's a part that you played a couple times before. Yeah. So, how what's it like, you know, revisiting this part and and drawing upon what you've done in the past and changing it? Obviously, sure. you have a different director. How does that? How do you impact that? You know, what what do you, how do you make changes to it? Well, the first time I played it, I was um, rather young, probably too young to play it, to have played it, um, and um, playing opposite different characters. The last time I did it was last summer, about fifteen months ago. Um, so playing against a different Aldonza, having a different Sancho Panza, and different directors and different visions from that director certainly influence um, the outcome. But um, I also draw from my own life experience. Now that I'm doing it at a more appropriate age, it's very different from when I was 25. So hopefully I'm bringing um, some things that are a bit more tangible and real um, as I'm acting the part of the older <laughs> senile, <laughs> senile <laughs> gentlemen, yeah. Um, much closer to those, home now. Much <laughs> closer to home. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so those factors all hopefully help age the part for me, like a good wine, hopefully. Sure, and we're always going to be critical that we've never done the perfect performance. So I'm thrilled that I can you know, be able to put on the armor again and hopefully correct some of the things that I did that I wasn't quite as happy with in the, in the previous renditions. Hopefully, you always improve. <laughs> so, so Andy, as you know, we said you you play Sancho, who is right. Quixote's beloved sidekick, mm -hmm. who will basically do anything for him, right? Um, because <laughs> you like him, as, yep. as, you, as you get to sing <laughs> a mentioned. few times in the show. Um, but there, are, there's a lot of great characters, and basically everybody in in the in the show gets to play two people because they're also playing somebody the, in the play with them. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this? Why do you think the show is so popular? And and you know, for, for like a young a young person who's never seen the show, like, mm -hmm. what do you think it you know would mean to them? Well, I think it's inter interesting you said that. Given that everyone plays within the show, within the show, it gives so us so much room as actors to expand on that and to play the covers and to play different angles. And everyone is finding this hope from a very different, mm -hmm. a very different angle. Right. Um, even within ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. the manservant finds it one way, Sancho finds it another way. So I think in terms of audiences, there's, it's just so relatable. It can come in and feel very daunting in a sort of dark show, but then once you buy into it, mm -hmm. you cannot get off that train. And, and probably, I think that's what keeps it. And so probably fun. everybody in the audience is identifying with somebody else mm -hmm. in, in, uh, somebody else mm -hmm. in the cast. Right? And our ensemble is awesome. I mean, everyone, you know, everyone has a feature, and it's amazing that it's just so filled, like, you know, the housekeeper, you can just track her all the way through, yeah. and it's, it's cool. Yeah. That I think the, the harmonies are beautiful. I know James May was a music director, and I mm -hmm. think, you know, just some, some beautiful mm -hmm. lilting melodies. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Jessica, what, what's your favorite moment in the show? Well, the first one that comes to mind is when he's singing to Dream the Impossible. Well, what's the song actually called? The Impossible, Impossible Dream. Dream. Um, and I'm just standing there, enjoying listening to him sing, and 
every night when he's finished, I'm either crying or laughing or smiling or something. And I'm always afraid that when the lights go out, if I'm smiling too big, that you're gonna be able to see my teeth. <laughs> because Aldonza shouldn't be sitting there going, ah! but I'm just so happy because I love listening to him sing that song. And, and you know, I've done this role twice before as well. This is my third time and, and as a young person, and then now an older person, and now as a mature, totally appropriate age to be playing this role, you definitely bring different things to it and different things become more poignant to you. Um, and then just the way, like you said, the way our world is right now, yeah. this show and that song in particular is so incredibly powerful. Um, when we were in early rehearsals, the tragedy in Las Vegas took place, the shooting. And I remember somebody posted something on Facebook that I disagreed with and I was like, no, don't get involved, don't, no, no, no. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fight the unbeatable foe. I'm going to go somewhere that may not be comfortable because you know what, when I, at the end of my life, if I maybe did something that made a difference, if I, as little as it may be, being an actress or being an advocate for the less fortunate or uh, far from you, um, <laughs> you know, gun control, whatever you're, you're passionate about, like, I think that the message that this show gives is that that is potentially one of the most important things we can do as humans is to, you know, to not sit back and watch. Not sit back, to. run and bear with unbearable sorrow and fight the unbeatable foe and right. dream. With, you know, that yeah. last ounce of courage. Yeah. You know, that last Even if bit. you're battered and bruised, like, who's get, you gotta fight. Yeah, I mean, not the, like the, fight, the lyrics are so poignant that you can quote them and, I mean, they really, they really resonate. Mm -hmm. they, they really do. In a very poetic, beautiful, non-confrontational way yeah. that I think is hard for a lot of people on social media to be as eloquent as yeah. the lovely <laughs> creators of this musical were, <laughs> if only. Yeah, so, so Jessica, this is your first time at ABT. Yes. James, you've been here, you've, you've um, acted and directed here. Mm -hmm. But Andy, you've been here for over 30, <laughs> over 30 times. I have. So, you know, that's both acting and directing. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to be directing South Pacific, South Pacific. which is coming next. Okay. You and James will both be in Christmas Carol, which was being mm -hmm. done downtown at the Herberger this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what keeps on bringing you back to ABT? Well, for me, I mean, I love the facility. I love everyone I work with. I love the Clap Hockeys. They're dear friends of mine. Um, but on a more like technical level, ABT, I found, has been so uh, wonderful presenting opportunities. Um, most theaters that I work at, I'm either like in the director Rolodex or in the actor Rolodex. Whereas ABT, it's so great that I get to continue to do both. And you've acted in a show that you directed too, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's always a little yourself. scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because I, I acted in uh, Whorehouse and yeah. Oliver. I yeah. did double duty for those two. So. Okay. So James, just ending with you, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about hope, but you know, what do you want audiences to take away from the show? Right? They can take away more than just one thing. I think they can take away the beautiful music that so many of them have identified with over 50 years since they first opened up. Um, and the, the message of um, that no matter how dire situations might be, that there is a glimmer of hope if you just um, can get past whatever wall you might have in front of you. Just know that there's something on the other side of that wall that is going to, you know, grab your hand and pull you to a safer and um, better place. A better place. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you yeah. so much. Thank, thank you. you, Gil. Thank uh, you. Here we are with the three leads from ABT, Mayo Mancha here in Peoria through November 11th.